Stephanie Bernstein. And my name is Jessica Medeiros. And, and we, we are your school, school counselors. counselors. So, as your school counselors, we thought we'd bring everyone together today to this assembly to talk about self-harm as it is on the rise. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about what it is, we're going to talk about how it develops, um, how social media plays a role, and ways that we can cope with it. So I'm going to start off with what is self-harm. Self-harm is when someone intentionally hurts themselves, and this can take several different forms, which we'll go into detail a little bit later. Um, although self-harm may lead to death, it is not a suicide attempt. Some people may find it difficult to manage and regulate stress and certain difficult feelings, and so they cope with these emotions through self-harm. Um, some reasons that people may participate in self-harm includes to try and express complicated and hidden feelings, um, to communicate to others that they need help, to prove to themselves that they are not invisible, to feel a sense of control, and to get an immediate sense of relief. There are many ways that people self-harm. Some may be a little bit more obvious and easier to detect, and there are several um, ways that are just a little bit more harder to identify. So some examples include, but are not limited to, cutting all throughout the body, hitting themselves, punching things, burning themselves, pulling out hair, rubbing their skin very hard, picking at scabs, scratching until their skin breaks, biting, and banging their head. And so now we'll have Stephanie talk a little bit more about how self-harm develops and certain factors that play a role and how social media impacts it. So individual factors are depression, anxiety, and fear, self-low esteem. Um, there's also some family factors. There can be an event such as divorce, um, poor relationship with peers in your family, such as parents or brother or sister, and um, some abuse or neglect can pay, play a role in that as well. Um, social factors such as media and bullying and the relationship students have with other um, classmates. Um, some statistics um, is that self-harm happens at ages 12 to 15. This can obviously happen at younger or older. Um, ages and it happens with both boys and girls. Um, it's not a failed attempt to suicide and it can be very serious since it can lead to death. And some media examples um, in recent in recent movies such as the Black Panther, we have a villain who has self-inflicted wounds um, all over his body indicating an event marker of all the kills he's done. Um, and this can happen for um, it's showing internal emotions externally with these. And Jessica will talk about some coping mechanisms. So today I want to address a few alternatives to self-harming behavior, which include expressing and sharing your feelings with close friends and family members. You can also write in a journal or express yourself creatively through, creatively through uh, journal, uh, writing in a journal or drawing a picture or coloring a picture. Also, you can use and repeat positive affirmations. For example, my feelings are painful, but they will not last forever. Um, also, I am a good enough person. Um, it, another alternative is speaking to your school counselor. If your school counselor is not available, you can speak to a therapist within the community. Uh, it's important to realize that therapy does take time and it's not, changes will not occur overnight. And there is a possibility of relapse, but continue building your relationship with your school counselor or your therapist. You can also avoid any stressors once you identify those stressors through counseling. You can try to avoid those stressors and make sure that um, if it's a person or an activity that's causing stress to avoid that. There's also distraction techniques, which include watching TV, listening to music, going for a walk, working out, or making a phone call or texting a friend. Now, uh, we would like to show you a clip from the TV show Degrassi, which illustrates how classmates can help one another and how um, the school counselor is there to provide support for the students. This is beyond me. I don't know how to help you, but Sovey will. I don't need help. Then show me your arm. There's nothing wrong with me. Then show me your arm. Ellie. Ellie, please. 
please show me your arm. That's all the time we have for today. I'm sorry. I wasted your time. No. You'll talk when you're ready. But recognizing that you need to talk and not cut, that's a big first step. <laughs> 